Hi everyone, welcome to the channel Marine Mumbles where I try and find the most entertaining and fun ways to share with you the amazing, weird and wonderful world of marine creatures and sea life. So if you think that's your cup of tea, then make sure to go right now and hit that subscribe button and that means you're going to keep up to date with the weekly videos where I post every single Wednesday that are absolutely jam-packed with as much marine content as I can feel and this video is no different so today we are going to be doing something and making something that I have loved since I was a child and that is trading cards so if you don't know what a trading card is, it's this little card with a picture of an animal or a creature on and it tells you the different facts or different things about them and you kind of make it up into a game. I personally was a fan of Pokemon cards but there are things like Yu-Gi-Oh cards, big games like Magic and all of these different games have trading cards as well as being full of absolutely unbelievably and amazing artwork. Trading cards are a really good way of getting a load of information into something very small and very aesthetically pleasing. So that is today's mission and hopefully the start of a new series based around these trading cards. So again, if you like, if you like this video, subscribe and make sure you give it a like and a comment to let me know that if you like this trading card video, um, for me to kind of carry on this series and work my way through as many marine creatures as I can. But for today's episode, we are focusing on crabs, especially rocky shore crabs, and we're going to be drawing three species. That's because crabs are so awesome and really full of their own personalities. Each different species really has to fit into a different way um, to live on the shore. All of these crabs are living in exactly the same place, so they have to kind of adapt their behavior and adapt what they do to make sure that they're not getting in each other's way. And as I go through this video today, I will be explaining exactly what they do to do that um, and drawing some marine arc as well. So uh, let's get to it. Mm. So our first species on the shore today is the common shore crab known in the Latin name as Carcinus minus. So I have made this template ready for us to fill and put in all the information about our creatures. I have a nice rocky shore border ready to put a photo in of all the creatures. I have a C in the top right hand corner and that is because the crabs that we're going to talk about they are crustaceans and if I carried on the series I would put um, the letter there for different things like gastropods and things like that would be a G for example. And then we have our different categories. Creature is obviously going to be the name, then we've got size, agility, predator power, crypsis, and these are five things that I think I'm going to explain them as I go along. Compass an animal and a creature and fits really well in the trading card theme. And we'll end on a nice fun fact so that you can both play a game and be educational. Our first creature is Carcinus Minus which is a really, really awesome um, crab and is known as the common shore crab. I'm gonna be sticking to putting the Latin names in of all these creatures, firstly, so that I can make sure I am refreshing my memory at all the Latin names, and also because on games like this, we have weird and wonderful names of all of mythical and creatures that you find and I feel like if people can remember them then you can kind of remember the Latin too, kind of gives it a bit more of a mystery to it. So given that its common name is the common shore crab we will start by filling in the rarity section on this card. So I'm going to rate all these different factors by five. In rarity's case the rarer it is the more points you get. I'm going to represent that with uh, a, little, a little crab icon a one little crab icon and we're just gonna put and we're just gonna put number one at the end just to you know uh, make it nice and simple for people to play so next we are going to just basically work our way down the list when it comes to size this crab isn't particularly large it doesn't get crazy big so I'm just gonna give it um, in terms of rocky shore creatures I'm gonna give it a three out of five 
it's pretty small it doesn't get really massive but also compared to a lot of the things on the rocky shore which is super super tiny it's a very mid-range kind of thing i'm basing this size off of what i imagine the largest thing on a rocky shore to be is probably an octopus or something along that lines and the smallest can go way 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 down to like microscopic then this is definitely uh, mid range to high range agility the common shore crab really really nails it uh, if you look at the legs they're really kind of made for fast scuttling around and running so this crab is can be everywhere and nowhere at the same time because it will run off in one direction and then run off in the other direction it really got a, a these really guys good so they definitely deserve a um, four from predator power well this I'm kind of referring to, firstly, not all species hunt on the rocky shore, so predator power might change names slightly, but what I'm really talking about here is the ability to catch its own food and the ability basically to sustain itself, whether that is actively hunting things or, you know, slurping things up if it was a snail. That's still in this category of how good is it, how good is it at catching its own food and these guys are really good they've got big giant claws they're agile they move fast really um they're one of the big dangers on the rocky shore for any creatures that are smaller than it and crabs will take uh, the advantage of getting hold of anything and everything to eat for their food so definitely definitely deserves a four on the crab rating scale Cripsis is another word for camouflage. And I'm using the word Cripsis because Cripsis is, um, rather than camouflage being something um, that you physically change your being to camouflage in, Cripsis is basically an organism's ability to blend in without potentially more of an active role in that. You know, it, things aren't changing color in an instant um, and so I'm referring to it as Cripsis so if that's a word you haven't heard before then that is what it means it's kind of camouflage but on a less active and prolonged scale when it comes to this commercial crabs really blend in they have made me jump plenty of times because I just don't see them and I put my hand somewhere and something will scuttle across it and I just realized that I've just put my hand right on the crab they are blended in to be with the brown, green uh, kind of colours um, and orangey for the sand and they, they really do uh, blend in that really well. Also their young are really really well at um, camouflaging Cripsis because they kind of have to become mottled and marbled. First of all that helps them blend in um, for the lots and lots of things that are bigger than a juvenile crab at that age but they were only really really tiny but also because uh, these guys are hungry as adults and not the best parents and don't really remember what uh, what crabs were their kids so we'll also try and eat um, these little juvenile crabs so they have to become really marbled and really really good at this camouflage for the juvenile stage of their life so they definitely deserve a four in the rating for that. Now we've already talked about rarity. Um, they are common shore crabs. You will find them everywhere. You'll find them on sandy shores. You'll find them on rocky shores. You'll find them uh, in harbours sometimes, scuttling along. They're really, they're everywhere. So definitely um, not rare at all. On to our fun fact to make this extra educational activity. Um, this species and um, other crab species are really cool. Not cool for the crabs. It's really cool to learn about. There is a parasitic barnacle that looks absolutely nothing like a barnacle. It looks exactly like the eggs of the shell, uh, the eggs of crabs. So if you've ever seen a crab with eggs, if you hold the crab and lift it up, so it's you're looking at it's basically its belly, its underside, it'll have a clump of eggs, which is an orange mass. Um, if you ever do find that, then just please gently put the crab back and leave it alone. It likes to, you know, it's protecting its young. It don't need to stress it out anymore. But sometimes this egg mass doesn't really look exactly like eggs. Very, very similar. Will look a bit more spongy, a bit more. 
yeah, I suppose spongy is kind of the word, but really like, unless you look at it in detail, you will think it's an egg mass. Well, actually this is this parasitic barnacle. It goes into the crab and actually stops the crab breeding itself, but will continue to make the crab produce hormones that uh, really push that maternal breeding um, kind of uh, behavior so that the crab is still protecting the egg cases and will also even go down to the fact that when the larvae is hatching from this barnacle um, which is what the the pretend egg masses are it will even like waft and make sure it all gets away safe kind of thing so uh really really cool cool creature um the parasitic barnacle called, sac called saculina that does this not so cool for the crabs but next up is the, the edible crab called cancer pagarus is its latin name and this guy is definitely different to our common shore crab friend although both live in exactly the same environment the size of this crab is a very difficult one to judge because when you find them on the rocky shore, they generally tend to be a lot smaller. They're about pebble size, but that's because the rocky shore is kind of the juvenile zone for them. It's the nursery ground, the place they live when they're smaller. They then go way off out into the sea and get a lot, lot bigger. Looking like this kind of size, definitely definitely bigger than you'll ever find a common shore crab. When it comes to agility, uh, these guys definitely don't have the edge over common shore crabs. They are chunky and clunky and basically these edible crabs are built for strength and kind of are like armoured up. They're just covered in armour and not really going to go too, doesn't look like they're going to go too far and it means that they just move a little quicker and also if you ever see a edible shore crab on the rocky shore if you pick him up it's probably one of the only crab species um, when they're tiny that probably won't pinch you. They just kind of roll up in a ball in your hand and uh, are just happy to stay there because they're quite shy. So. I'm just going to put their agility down to two when compared to the common shore crab. When it comes to predator power, I think a running theme with all crabs is that they are ace at predation. They really are little machines honed to get what they need to eat. So without a doubt, definitely a four for predation power. When it comes to Crypsis, it definitely has some. Um, I'm giving it one because it is bright purple on a lot of shores that does stand out a lot more than other ones you do mistake it for a pebble every now and again but most of the time these guys hide under rocks and use hiding under rocks as their uh, protection um, and not actually their shell or their colour though they, they do blend in reasonably well and rarity I would say they're a bit rarer than the common shore crab just for the fact that they don't have common shore Com well, they were common in their name, but I wouldn't say that they are not common. So I'm just bumping it up to two because in some places I know that finding an edible shore crab is a really cool thing, whereas I'm pretty sure that everywhere has common shore crabs. So that's where that is getting a two. So obviously I've spoken about the fact that this crab is called the edible shore crab. Well, um, the fun fact is that it is edible, but I think the fun I don't know if it's a fun fact, it's a fact. It's a, it's a fact that we really do rely a lot on these um, crabs for uh, the crab food industry. Over 10,000 tonnes a year is just taking in from the English Channel alone of these guys. Um, so if you're eating crab, you're probably eating these uh, most of the time in the UK. But the reason I think it's a fun fact is that um, rocky shores are the places that kind of help feed these are giant nurseries. Um, all of the rocky shore has these juvenile species on them and they're protecting them and helping them live and providing a stable environment for them to grow up in. So this next species, for those of you that have been watching for a while, all my friends that know me, know that this is probably 
my favourite all-time species because it is a bundle of tiny aggression and it is amazing. <laughs> this species is Nakora puba, the devil crab, also known as the velvet swimming crab, but I like to call it the devil crab because it encompasses exactly what it's like. I mentioned earlier about all of these different crabs living on the same shore and how do they get round that? Well, the common shore crab's very agile and nips and hides and disappears. It's like a ninja of the shore. It can camouflage in and it can run really fast and it can get away and that's probably why it's done so well on our shores. The edible crab has big bulky armour so it doesn't really need to move as much but you know, it's, it's, it's stocky and ready to take on the battles and um, and a lot calmer because it has this armour so while one crab is out there doing all this exercise and energy it's sitting there just doing what it needs to do and not faffing around too much. That leaves room for the devil crab and it goes at everything all guns blazing. That's its strategy. It is amazing. It is the most aggressive crab you will ever meet. It will try and attack you just because it can. It it's like a chihuahua that thinks it's a wolf. It's great. <laughs> so when it comes to size, it's pretty much the same size as a common shore crab. It might get a bit bigger as it gets to adult stage, but really still a three, very much on the medium scale of the rocky shore. But for agility, we have our first five. It is definitely deserves this five. Not only is it as agile, scurrying around as the common shore crab it also has back legs that are adapted and flattened into swimming legs this means it can leap into the water and swim around just as just as agilely as um, as it would running around so not only can it catch stuff um, clambering on rocks but it can catch shrimp and everything it's just going at it full throttle, doesn't care, nothing's going to stop it, develops legs to swim in water too, which I just think is awesome. Which then leads us to our second five, because for predator power, nothing's going to stop this. You could be a seagull and this crab is going for you. Like, I'm not saying it's going to catch the seagull, but it will try. It's basically a perfect predator machine ready to eat as much as it can on the rocky shore and uh, it's really really awesome. When it comes to Cryptis, I thought about giving it one but I gave it um, two because it does have like this fur on it um, which is where it gets the name from Velvet from and that fur kind of helps it blend in especially if it tucks its legs under its body and it, it is brownie so it kind of does look a bit more like a rock but it has this amazing coloration of bright blue legs and bright red eyes so I would say that this crab does not care really about blend blending in too much um, because it would rather just attack you anyway I don't think this would hide from anything um, but it does kind of blend in a bit better than I think an edible crab so I'm putting that as two when it comes to rarity, unfortunately in my life I've only held a handful of these guys, um, not down to the lack of trying. They are a common species, they're not particularly rare, they can also be used for um, catching um, and eating and, and stuff like that. So it's, there's, definitely, and there's definitely a lot of them, but they just tend, I've tended in my life to find them less and they do tend to be rarer than some of the other ones. Um, so I'm giving it a three, one, because we know they're out there, but also, I mean, I'll go rock pulling a lot and if I've only held them a handful of times, then it's definitely not as common. The fun fact is basically what I've just said about it having the velvety feel to its, its shell and stuff because um, it's hairy but to be perfectly honest if I've held a, a velvet swimmer I haven't been had really had a chance to touch the shell because its claws are like going at it and it's I'm just admiring how aggressive this tiny thing is, is trying to be. So I have really loved making these 
trading cards. I think it's super fun and really cool. So if you guys like it, please subscribe and like and let me know because any old excuse to spend my days like I did when I was a kid making my own trading cards. Guys, I'm super happy just to sit here and do this. So if you would like to make me super happy, then please let me know and I will just spend my time making trading cards. What a life. That's it for this week's video. I will see you guys right on schedule again next Wednesday evening and I hope you all have a fantastic week. Until then, bye guys. Mm -hmm.